so Draymond was on Pat Bev's podcast, um, and he uh, addressed the Jordan Poole situation, um, basically saying, you know, I got the direct quotes here. He said, I don't just hit people. Dialogue happens, and dialogue happens over the course of time. You usually aren't just triggered by something like that fast to that degree. This is a team. Nobody on my team is triggering me in an instant. We know stuff you don't say amongst men. We know things that you have to stand on. He said, as I've admitted before, I was in the wrong in the way I handled it for the situation where we were. But clearly he feels like Jordan Poole said something that you just aren't going to say to another man. He said fighting words. It's basically the gist of what he's saying. Um, So after all that came out on the podcast, got released. Um, (laughs) Jordan Poole's dad was not having that. (laughs) And he said that he'll stand on that all of this stuff that Draymond is saying is some BS. He said, Jordan Poole used to be his guy and he avoided me. He's saying that Draymond avoided him, Jordan Poole's dad, all of last season. And I'm gonna bleep this part out because he was kind of letting it go. But he said, he is a soft A, B. (laughs) And (laughs) I'm standing on this. He didn't apologize to me or my wife. So he's lame and me and him can meet anytime he wants so draymond said jordan Poole was talking with some fighting words jordan Poole's dad is explicitly now trying to fight (laughs) (laughs) uh so and really in all of this i only just feel bad for jordan Poole because it feels like he's been trying to move on from this situation for ever like (laughs) as soon as it happened and all the media in Washington people have asked him about it. And he's like, look, I'm not going to say anymore. Like, let's talk about Washington. Like, let's move on from it. Cause at the end of the day, like it's gotta be embarrassing. Like that video never in a million years should have leaked out, but it did the drama that it caused probably internally and just in his life, like to have to go through a day to day, knowing that you just got rocked by your teammate on camera and the whole world saw it. Um, so yeah, and amidst all of this, like back and forth drama between Draymond and Jordan Poole's dad is unneeded. And I really just feel bad for, for JP and all of it. My thing is, right, this happened at the beginning of last season to a guy that is no longer even on your team anymore. Why are you still talking about this? That, like, to me, it does not make sense because it's like, Okay, you're asked about it. I get it. Jordan, like you just said, Jordan Poole is asked about it as well. He's moved on. I'm not one. I don't want to talk about it. I'm in Washington now. Like he's not no longer with the team. It's like Draymond acts like if you get asked a question, I 100% got to answer it. Like I have to answer it no matter what. Mm-hmm. It's like no, you can choose to say, all right, that situation happened. Cool, we moved on. I apologize. That situation's done and over with. You keep bringing, why do you keep bringing it up over and over and over again? Like, the situation is old. Like, move on. You keep trying to bring it up. And the guy who you punched is moved on already. I, probably yeah. not mentally, but just publicly. <laughs> <laughs> publicly, he's moved on. Like, why are you bringing it up still? Like, that to me, I just don't get it. Because it's like, it's like you want to talk about it. Like, you want to keep talking about it. Because you keep bringing it up over and over and over again. And in the whole comments of, like, you say, he said something that you shouldn't say to no man. Draymond, you said you said the same thing. To, you did the same thing to Kevin Durant. You did the same thing to LeBron, and now y'all best friends. It's like, bro, I'm not hearing that. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing that. Cause like talking about some, he said this, he said that. You said you said worse to Kevin Durant apparently that got him wanting to leave. Mm-hmm. You said the same thing to LeBron, but y'all are cool now. Y'all best friends. Like, I don't know, Draymond. I I, just, I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and Draymond responded to, to Jordan Poole's dad and said, that's so cute, it's impossible to avoid you at an arena for a year, champ. I got to go get my family from the same family room that you're in every game and stop using those words that usually don't go over well amongst men. Look, <laughs> it, it's just so unnecessary at this point. Like you said, bro, we are over a, almost – literally to a day like a year removed from this situation 
Let it lie. Bro is not even on the team anymore. That's the thing. You're not... Like, he's not on your team. Why are you even talking about the Jordan... He's not on the Warriors anymore. Worry about the people that are on your team. I don't get that. All right. And I look, I'll be the first person to admit, and we both seen it firsthand playing sports. Like, teammates fight. And sometimes, bro, it, like... People throw hands like it just that's a reality. It's a, a huge environment like mm-hmm. people fight. The issue here is really that it got leaked out to the public. And it's a little bit different when like, OK, we're all in high school. We're like 15, 16 year olds and like somebody shove somebody after a play and it turned into a whole fist fight versus you are like 34. <laughs> you are all right. professionals. This is your job. You are getting paid for this. And you're punching, you're the vet, the heart and soul of the locker room, punching the 22 year old young guy. Like, the optics are different. And the, like, the responsibility has to be different. Like, you know, like I said, was, this happened in high school, college, whatever. That's one thing. Bro, if any of us in our day jobs got mad at a co worker and was like, bro, what you say? Boom, we are right. getting fired. Point yeah. blank, you're getting fired. You might get arrested. Like, so it, it can't, it has to be held to a higher standard. At the same time, like, you can understand it because emotions run hot, but you you got to hold it to a higher standard. So, obviously, he's, I was going to say, he's come out, he apologized for, you know, he had that segment on TNT where he did the whole, <laughs> like, got a two minute apology video. Um, but like you said, bro, it's, it happened a year ago. Y'all need to let it lie. It needs to let it be because clearly Jordan Poole is trying to move on from it. And, like, that should be enough indicator for y'all to be, like, including his dad to, like, bro, just if he wants to talk about it, let him talk about it. Like, just let it go because you're just creating more unnecessary drama for him. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Draymond hasn't been a good leader to these young guys, bro, because he's – I heard punching people in the face. You saw that he don't got a relationship with Kat, with uh, Kaminga. And mm-hmm. seeing that, it's like, I don't know. Draymond's been, he's been out here bugging, man. I don't know. I, I don't know. But th- I'll tell you one thing. The, war- the Warrior season's over, and it didn't even start yet. The Warrior season is done. They are already talking about stuff that happened in the past. Then you got him talk- still talking about the Chris Paul, like saying, like, oh, yeah, I said I didn't like him. That hasn't changed, but we're- I'm excited to work with him. Like, what? <laughs> Like, that hasn't changed. Honestly, Draymond, he talks too much. <laughs> like, Draymond needs to just handle all of this without a camera and without a mic. Like, I'm fine with you having a podcast. I'm never going to be like, players shouldn't talk about this. No, you're fine. You have your podcast whatever. But there's certain things that he just shouldn't say. Like, he, honestly, he's been talking too much for a while. Cause remember that thing he talked about with Steph? I forgot what it was. That has something to do with, like, Steph and LeBron. Um... Oh my god, I forgot what it was, but it was like Steph was it was something that had to do with the Lakers series or something like that. Mm. And it was just too much information, like basically like throwing Steph under the bus. I forgot exactly what it was. Just like he's been talking way too much. Like been saying too much <laughs> personal information, too much stuff that just shouldn't be said on a podcast or on the media in general. It needs to be handled behind closed doors. But I guarantee you, matter of fact, I'll ask you this question. Over under one and a half altercations for the Warriors this season. Over. <laughs> because between Over. him Chris and like Paul, if you're I I'm talking about like these are certified stamp, we know what happens. Cause you know it's gonna bro, as soon as training camp starts, some beat writer is just gonna make up some lie and be like Draymond Green and Chris Paul seen butting heads at practice. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, but like look. If you're already willing to go as far just to be like, and at the same time, like I can respect that you're not being fake or phony. Like you did say that you didn't like Chris Paul before. So I respect the fact that you're like, I said it, I meant it. I still mean it. Like I don't really (laughs) care for you like that. I can respect that. But at the same time, why are you saying it? Right. Like again, the optics of it, like, bro, you are a vet a leader on this team that still has a decent amount of young guys like and even just for team morale as a whole like if i'm steph i would just be like 
bro, why? Like, why are you saying that? This dude ain't even come to the locker room yet. And you saw he's he's talking about some. I'm not a Ben, not coming off the bench. I'm telling you, their season is done. I'm telling you, bro, it's done before they even started. You got Chris Paul talking about some. <laughs> you said like, how, how you feel about contributing off the bench? He said, you the coach. <laughs> Yo, that just had me crying, bro. Said you the coach. <laughs> oh, like then, like, bro, you're I, coming I, I, off the bench, bro. I get I, where he coming from too, cause like, nah, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm don't. saying it from the perspective of like, bro, I'm Chris Paul. Like, I'm one of the best PGs ever. Who are you as a reporter to be like? How you know I'm about to be off the bench? You're not a reporter with like, common sense. She had common sense to know that a lineup with with Chris Paul, Curry, Clay, Wiggins, and Draymond is not winning anything, and is not guarding a parked car. <laughs> Like she's not dumb. Like our, you're our, not our starting. putting up at least fifteen. <laughs> at least, at least shooting forty percent from three. Like come on, bro. Like listen, I'm telling you, Chris Paul. I I had more. It made more sense for Carmelo when he was doing the whole "I'm not coming off the bench" thing because at that point in his career, I think Carmelo was coming off being an all star. Like mm-hmm. Carmelo was still a, a solid player. Chris Paul, bro. No, you're a six foot, thirty eight year old point guard who cannot stay healthy, and at this point in your career is a defensive liability. You're not starting, and if you're starting, right. the Warriors and Steve Kerr are idiots because that shouldn't that shouldn't be your starting lineup at all. That's gonna be terrible. I would say we talked about this months ago, right when it first started being reported that Bob Myers might leave. They bring in Mike Dunleavy, right? They promote him to GM. I would give Mike Dunleavy a solid, bro, a F, <laughs> F grade. Like, yeah. bro, in one offseason, you shipped out Jordan Poole for Chris Paul. Again, take the anything on the court related. You brought in a guy who your coach, your star players have beef with in the past coming off of a year where you're internal locker room turmoil was one of the biggest storylines how do you do that nah that's so stupid <laughs> that's like, so stupid bro what they're done bro they're cool of, bro of all the all the players in the league you could have went and found anybody you picked the like one of the only well, i mean i know draymond probably got beat for a lot of people but mm-hmm. like you went and found somebody he's explicitly talked about not liking when your whole last season was like literally just like riddled with the fact that he went and knocked out your your new young hundred twenty million dollar contract player in training camp. Like that cannot it cannot be a good recipe. And then again, like you just said, on top of that, obviously after the injuries, Clay is not the defender he used to be. Like, Steph, I think, is – I'm going to say this. I think he's underrated on defense because people be labeling him as a horrible defender, and I don't think he's that bad. I Not just don't anymore. Think he's, right. I just don't think he's a great defender. I think he still has active hands. He can get you some steals. The effort, like – but, like, he don't he don't have the tools to really be a, a like really good defender. Mm-hmm. Chris Paul is too old to be – like like you said, he's a defensive liability. Clay is a defensive liability after the injuries – they need to take them badges off of 2K because he probably still got like, <laughs> he probably still got like points on goal. Defensive stopper. They um, need the to thing, take like. all the defensive badges off. Not that he's a horrible <laughs> defender, but again, it's like he's not the defender. He's not the two way player that he used to be. How are the three of y'all gonna play together? It's not gonna work, bro. Chris who's, Paul, who's so then in his mind, Wiggins is coming off the bench. Yeah, best defender is coming off the bench. Wiggins was the two option when y'all just won the ring. <laughs> Wiggins is not coming off the bench, bro. I'm sorry. No, bro. You're coming off the bench. I'd rather have Wiggins on my team right now than you. I would. He would bring me more to my team, and he'll be there when I need him. He missed a chunk of the season and still was there for the playoffs playing quality minutes. All right. Like, no, bro. You're You're coming off the bench, and it's okay. It's okay. I, I think about it. How is this lineup even going to work as far as just the offense? How's it going to work? So it's like, all right, let's say Wiggins comes off the bench, right? It is Curry, Paul, Clay, Draymond, Looney. Looney. Chris Paul likes to run pick and rolls. Him and Who Looney are you running a pick and roll with? Him and Looney. 
That's disgusting. I'd throw up watching that. <laughs> like you, Chris Paul's too old to be running off screens. He's he's not setting the off ball screens. He's not, bro. Okay, but this though, you put uh, him and Looney running a pick and roll. You got Draymond running some elevator screen type action. Him and Clay setting picks for Steph. They doing all this crazy off ball motion for me. So now all Chris got to do is make the right read. You got Looney at the rim. He could pull up for his own midi. Steph and Clay doing curl routes and comebacks, zigzags all Listen, over the court. If Looney and Chris Paul are running a pick and roll, get the rebound because we're going back and on offense. That is not the recipe for success in 2023, bro. I'm sorry. Chris Paul and Looney pick and roll is not going to cut it, bro. I'm sorry. This is what I also say, too, bro. Like, Chris Paul is going to be 39, I think. His birthday is like later in the season, so he'll end up being 39 at some point next year. Mm. Bro, there is no shame at this point in your career at being a 39 year old and coming off the bench. That's like, what I'm saying. Like, I don't see why you had to snap on the reporter. You're coming off the bench, and it's not even like a knock on you. You're just not a starting caliber point guard right now. Like, we any the vast, vast majority of players we've seen play into this age, like they become bench players. The first person that comes to mind is like Vince Carter. He played super late in his age. Bro, he was on Atlanta. He was not really getting ticked at all. Like he just mm-hmm. was a vet in the locker room. Right. Like you at that point you just you're doing it for the love of the game and you still have something to contribute a little bit on the court. A lot more of your benefit is off the like off the court, the vet mentality. Like you're one of the greatest point guards ever. Like I mean, they don't have Jordan Poole anymore, so that would have been a great person to kind of get in his ear, but like get in with the young guys, like help build a culture. Um so, like, that's just the role that it is, I think, for Chris Paul. I think his high level of basketball IQ and acumen will pre- prevent it from being, like, a flop. Like, he'll find a way to make it work to an extent. But it's not the most natural fit. Like you said, they, they didn't go out and get a big, again, F Mike Dunley. <laughs> like, so they're still really working with Looney. They're giving up a lot of size. In the West, that just was dominated by it. A seven foot Serbian monster, like, bro. <laughs> it just, I, I'm gonna have to agree with you. This this season is might be cooked for Golden State, which is a shame, bro. Because there are legit arguments that like the Steph Curry that we saw last year may have been one of the most complete Steph Curry seasons. Like, doing arguably more on the offensive side of the ball. I think his finishing is better than it's ever been like his ability to get to the basket finishing through contact bro he in a lot of and ones crafty finished with both hands obviously like he just i think this is just like a different form of steph than we saw during kind of like his mvp runs Mm -hmm. um and it's really on the same level of player which is why he's still the best point guard in the league and i think to me is probably the best point guard ever, like just by pure people that played that position. Um, and it's a shame that, like, again, they had the whole double timeline thing. This, These are the moves that they made to consolidate and just say, well, the double timeline ain't going to work. Let's just maximize this timeline. And they maximize this timeline by getting Chris Paul. Yeah, it's, it's tough because – and I, I, I don't want to say they wasted it because they they did win a championship. So it's not like they completely wasted this um like this more all around version of Steph Curry. But it is tough to see that the fact that they they definitely messed up as far as like building a, another championship level team around Curry. Because like you said, and I think Draymond talked about it. He's been in the weight room like, and you can clearly see that like he doesn't just get pushed around anymore. Like mm-hmm. like twenty yeah like twenty sixteen Steph was amazing and insane. But he did have his flaws. I think that was when he was a terrible defender. Like, that was when he was a defensive liability. And that was when he couldn't really finish. He could finish at the rim, like, at uh, great levels. But the and ones, the finishing through contact, it wasn't the same that, that, than it is right now. You could visibly see it. Like, he's he's not just a scrawny, skinny kid. Like, he's he's built. You know what I mean? So, mm. the, yeah, it's, it's tough because he still is at that level where, like, he's one of the best players in the league. Probably, like, a top three four player in the nba right now and they, they they're they're not gonna win anything this season i'm sorry like unless chris paul is on an expiring so like maybe best case scenario he's playing great first half of the season 
you trade him to a team, you get some pieces. I, I don't know. I don't know. But the way it's currently constructed and the way they're talking in the offseason right now, specifically Draymond, this season's cooked, bro. 